Uh, hi, I'm Mike Dano with Light Reading, and we're here at the uh, big Network X event. However, what we're going to talk about is what the three of us got to go to yesterday. The three of us got to go. So, so Ruth, uh, Gabe, and I uh, yesterday got to visit Ericsson's 5G manufacturing facility here in Texas. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. But it's a it's a huge manufacturing facility, and that is where Ericsson makes pretty much all of its 5G equipment for the U.S. market. They make millimeter wave radios there. They make mid-band radio. They make massive MIMO radios at this facility. They make some of the baseband equipment there. Ericsson had an open house event for that manufacturing facility. We got to hear from some top Ericsson executives about what they had to say about the U.S. market and the manufacturing efforts. We got to hear from some U.S. government officials about how they, you know, what their views are in terms of uh, uh, 5G manufacturing here in the U.S. Um, and then we also all got to tour the manufacturing plant. We got to see where they make the sausage and how it all works. and. Uh, uh, we got to uh, uh, ask some of the uh, workers there, you know, uh, how how it goes. Um, they said that they that manufacturing facility runs 24/7. They've got three shifts. It works all week long into the weekend. They're pumping out radios. Ericsson officials would not give us a, a definitive number as to how many radios are produced every week or how many radios um, they have produced in that facility. It opened in 2020, but they um, this is sort of the coming out party for that place because it opened during COVID. They couldn't have people come visit, but now they sort of took the wraps off it and we got to see it. So Ruth, what were your, what were your takeaways from this, from this tour? What was like, what was, what was the most interesting thing you saw there? So I actually really liked the fact, so we went around the tour, there's yep. loads of machinery, all different uh, manufacturers. They've automated it all together, mm. which was a big undertaking. You know, it's not uh, manufacturers I've, you know, realized or seen. The, the scale of it was massive. So they were saying there was nine different production lines putting components onto these printed circuit boards. 18,000 components on each board. Right. Um, you know, they're doing something like uh, 74,000 of these components each line per day. It, it was just the scale was enormous. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's true. Like, uh, they got to show us some of the computer boards that are form the basis for some of the equipment. That, and it's, you know, it's like a two, two feet by one yeah. foot. I mean, it, these are enormous you know, things that they're assembling all these components onto. Quite impressive, I agree. Gabe, what was your, what was your big takeaway from that? Um, well, there's a couple of things. I think first thing to say is really it's a, uh, you can think of it as a, a PR, a big gigantic PR exercise, <laughs> yes. should, should we say. I mean, that um, is true. You have Ericsson trying to align itself and impress upon the US at large that, you know, aligns with build America, buy America kind of principles and ethos and things like that. US is 25% of its group sales, so it's, it's best market essentially. So it's got every incentive to do that. Um, they also, so they talked about manufacturing, of course, but they also talked about how essentially the supply chain is, is US based. So they have their ASIC design in, in Texas, in Austin, um, how they buy a bunch of other, you know, US, sometimes US fab, but certainly US design silicon in their products as well. So it's this whole kind of supply chain solution. Um, it was a PR exercise. I think. The thing about it, though, is it's, it's one of these kind of rare cases where it was sort of, it was great PR because it was unalloyed good story, right? There weren't, you know, there wasn't anything wrong with it. It was, it was great PR because it was true and it kind of, you know, gave, it, it tells a great story for them. It makes them look good. You know, it's, it's, it's a real strength they have. Um, so that, that was, I suppose, my, my primary takeaway. Mm. You know, there's a couple of things on the, um, on the product and technology side as well. Yeah. 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 And it's true. I mean, you know, Ericsson has a, 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 a major market share here in the U.S. They're now the sole supplier to AT&T. They're a supplier to Verizon. They're a supplier to T-Mobile. Um, and so, you know, seeing seeing where they're making a lot of that equipment, you know, as they grow their market share and they're meeting all these build America, buy America requirements, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. It's true. It is a, in terms of a PR exercise you know, probably an A, at least an A, if not an A plus. 
Um, I did think it was interesting. So, you know, when they first opened that manufac manufacturing facility in 2020, um, they had talked about, you know, it's going to be a smart manufacturing facility. It's going to have private 5G. You know, everything's going to be automated. That wasn't quite what we saw. Yes, they did have a millimeter wave private network in there for, and they did have some robots that were riding around, carrying things around the uh, the manufacturing floor. But um, I think that you know many Ericsson officials had you know acknowledged that it, there were some things that were connected, but it really it really didn't meet that that ideal that we've heard about about a you know a completely wireless manufacturing floor where everything is connected to to uh, 5G it was not that um, but i thought that you know they used 5G for some things like the robots were connected um, but other things it just doesn't make sense to connect them you know and so i thought in that respect it was nice to see it was uh, you know sort of a real world use of 5G it wasn't this PowerPoint presentation, it was, here are the things that work, here are the things that we don't need to connect because there's no reason to. So mm -hmm. yeah, I thought it was interesting, good stuff. Any final yeah, takeaways? Yeah, I think you're right. So a lot of the machines were connected by Ethernet yep. um, and they're talking about the massive data that you know they need to use that for. Um, but I thought the other interesting point was they were talking about the factory as if it's this test bed, proof of concept environment. So they're trying different radios out, you know, they're integrating stuff. And that's quite different to the normal factory environment, which is normally you build it once, you fully automate and it's static and it stays like that and it works. Yeah, so that was a yeah, good takeaway. Yeah. Anything else, Gabe? Um, well, I think uh, we, we should also say the, the manufacturing facility is a competitive advantage mm. um, for, for Exxon in that sense. And one of the things you're talking about, how they've integrated the whole production line from different vendors and so forth. Yeah, it's not all mm. 5G connected. They, they've got, you know, I think the point they made quite well is these, um, as Ruth said, these 18,000 components on a board. They're two-sided boards, so you've got a full massive MIMO 6432TR system on a single board. Well, there was no manufacturing uh, contract manufacturer that could um, deliver that that level of um, no, you know, number of components and integration and so forth. So I think you know we have to kind of cut some slack there. Like the the fact that they've you know done it at all is a competitive advantage, and then. The, the, the fellows showing us around, they did make the point that over time they're, you know, experimenting with millimeter wave, they've got C-band coming in, this and that. So it's kind of, you know, I think in the end it was, uh, yeah, the, 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 the big gear is, you know, wired Ethernet, right? But, you know, it was a, I think it was a, a really good talk. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was, it was somewhat, you're right, somewhat a work in progress, but certainly very impressive as to the scale, the commitment, you know, and, what, and you know, it reflects in the deals that Ericsson's won. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Good? All right. Gabe, Ruth, thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mike.